<laughs> yeah, art. <laughs> art is cool. Stay in school, kids. Art is cool. <laughs> Uh, kia ora, ko Lea Toku Ingoa. Um, I'm Leah. I'm a classical musician, a freelancing arts administrator, um, and currently a part time law student. It's a strange combination, like the two worlds can feel quite weird to juggle. Um, and a lot of people will be like, oh, law's a handy backup if music doesn't work out. And I've never really thought of it that way. I believe really strongly in not only the practice of art itself, but art advocacy. And that means advocating for the people who make art and how to make it more ethical and accessible, but also advocating for art as something that's beneficial for everybody, not just the people making it. I was born in England, but we moved here when I was nine and I've grew up in Wellington since then. So music's uh, been a part of my life um, since I was about primary school age. I started on the piano and then did clarinet around the age of like six or seven, I would have started and have just been doing it ever since then. So a long time. <laughs> so that's like 17 years on clarinet? Yeah. <laughs> really? Oh my gosh. So Pornica Classical Sessions, it started in April 2021 and it's an accessible classical music series that happens most Tuesdays um, at Bedlam and Scholar. And the idea is that it's accessible for both artists and audiences. So Classical Sessions existed as a series before I took over. It was run by Chamber Music New Zealand. I set out with like a clear intention being like, this is kind of what I think needs to exist as a space in Wellington for classical music. We have students and like freelancers, musicians from Orchestra Wellington and the NZSO who are like quite established and had really long careers. Audiences can see each week people from every like stage of their sort of career and people with lots of different relationships to performing music. When I talk to people who do have those misconceptions about classical mu music, you know, the whole art's just like old dead white guys and there's a huge amount of young people practicing it. So it isn't just for old people because there are a lot of young people who care about it a lot and are deeply passionate about it. When I'm sort of advocating for how classical music can be exciting, it's just actually trying to get people to come and see it live and like meet the people who practice it and like hear them talk about why they love it and like why they chose that particular song to sing and like actually be close to people when they're performing because you can really feel the focus and the energy. It's more engaging. There is an issue with elitism in classical music. There has been a lot of work by a lot of really um, passionate, community-minded people. I think it's too easy to say that that work's done. It's, it's still elitist. There's still a huge race problem in classical music because classical music has a real history of tokenism. It's a huge gender problem, but in terms of the institutions and higher up, there can be quite problematic attitudes towards it still. It's all supposed to be like about your technical skill and musical ability and that's always in classical music what's supposed to speak for you. But it's also so naive because most of our main arts organisations in Wellington have maybe had one female CEO, if ever. People get into this hole where they think like we need to be accessible and diverse for the sake of it because we know it's something we need to do. But it actually makes art better to have a range of people at the table. Like classical music will be a better art form for having a greater range of people, like gender expression, sexuality, race, age. It will just, it will be a more exciting art form and it will actually be new. The name classical is like in its name, so it doesn't help, but we can think about it as something that's new and evolving and like relevant. It's funny when I get asked to give advice because I'm like, I have just started figuring stuff out. <laughs> There's so much pressure put on young artists to decide right away how 
how you're going to be a professional artist, my piece of advice would be just trust that it's actually gonna be there in your life, regardless of what like practical decisions you have to make. Keep going to the kind of gigs that make you happy and listen to music you love and just trust that if it's meant to be in your life, it will be quite naturally. It's not gonna go anywhere.